Hello YouTube, Goddard Radio Moscow here again with another beer review for you, as is usual. Um, so for this one we're going to go back to McKellar in Copenhagen in Denmark and we're going to do one of their beers that has been designed, as many of them are, to be paired with food. So this is the Dim Sum beer, which is a Pilsner style beer and it's actually designed to go specifically with Thai food and it's sort of, it's a collaboration brew with Eid, who is uh, one of the Michelin star winning Thai chefs in Copenhagen I believe. So it should be quite an interesting one for us to try. But um, as is usual then with my beer reviews, I'll take you through a very short history of the McKellar Brewery. I've shortened it a bit because I've done a couple of these reviews for you recently. But as always, if you are simply interested in the tasting of this beer, just fast forward a minute or two and you will get into that little segment. And uh, as is usual, the brewery website's in the video description for you below, along with the link to my other McKellar beer reviews. So anyway, just to tell you a little bit about McKellar, this is the famous Danish gypsy brewery founded by Christian Keller and Mikkel Bjergso, although now it's run exclusively by Mikkel Bjergso, who actually used to be a physics and math teacher at university. Again, these guys are very influenced by the American craft beer movement, and they basically started out as home with home brewing experimentations of a uh, Christian and Mikkel, but they gradually grew from there, and the same beer group that gave birth to this brewery also gave birth to Evil Twin Brewing, who is run by Mikkel's brother, twin brother, Yeppe, and uh, they also, Mikkel's, two of Mikkel's students, actually, they founded the uh, the Toil Brewery, who are the other famous Danish gypsy brewery, but obviously with it being a gypsy brewery, they don't have their own uh, their own brewery, and rather they brew at a variety of sort of host institutions, if you like, and they do this in the USA, Norway, Scotland, and Belgium. Most of their beer does actually tend to be brewed at the De Prof Brewery in Belgium, in Lokriste Heifte. But their home base is such as the McKellar Bar in Copenhagen, and they also have another bar in Copenhagen, which is a collaboration bar with Toul called McKellar and Friends. And this, as I mentioned to you, this brewery was founded by two of McKell's old students. And again, they're a hugely experimental brewery, and to date they've actually released well, probably well over a thousand different types of beer now. They do have a bar, I believe it's in San Francisco, and also one in Bangkok in Thailand as well. So if you're in any of those parts of the world, go and check them out. Some really interesting beers actually coming out of these guys, and I actually really enjoy having a taste of their beers. They do some really kind of unusual and very good ones there. <coughs> But let's get on to the tasting of this guy itself. I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little look at the uh, the artwork on this one. This is a 5% Pilsner beer. As I mentioned to you, it's called Dim Sum, and it's designed specifically to go with Thai food. And it's, uh, fi as I mentioned to you, it's 5% and it's brewed uh, with lemongrass and coriander. So it should have a nice little bit of a spicy malt base to it. And as I said before as well, it's, brew it's uh, blue brewed in collaboration with uh, Henrik Yid, who is a... Uh, a Thai chef who's won Michelin stars, a very, very sort of coveted award in the culinary business, if you like. So let's get this guy out and get on with the tasting here. I'm quite excited to try this one, actually. It's been in my stockpile for a little bit. I just forgot about it, actually. But this is another one I've picked up from Thistle News in Aberdeen. So as always, their link is in the video description for you below. And this is a really nice little sort of family-run news agents. And uh, Lewis actually likes to just sell kind of craft beer on the side. He's got a fridge full of it and a little shelf at the side that he's not allowed to show for... Uh, for sort of licensing reasons, although it is it is legal, but there's just some really weird laws in Scotland when it comes to displaying alcohol and stuff like that. But he's trying to sort that out. But anyway, let's just bring up the light and I'll make sure you can have a proper look at the colour of this beer. It's a very sort of bright, hazy orange amber. It actually looks very similar to some of these Brewdog single hop IPAs that I've been reviewing for you recently. But as you can see, a solid finger, maybe a slightly off-white head, maybe more of a cream colour than, than white, I would say. There's not much in the way of a visible carbonation, actually. Just tiny little bits going up to the bottom of that head there. And the head seems to be holding quite steadily, actually. But let's give it a smell and see how we get on with it. It smells like a very, very kind of grassy pilsner, just on, just without even going too in depth to it. Let's give it a shugle. You can smell that kind of really sharp, sweet lemongrass in there. Very citric lemon. There's actually almost a little bit of a kind of lime smell to it as well. You can smell just a little bit of that coriander mixing in with the kind of bready malt base too. But a lot of grassy hops. You can smell the lemongrass as well. A little bit of kind of lime. There's actually a little bit of a yeasty character. It has a kind of sweet yeasty bread kind of underlying in this one. So it's, it's really interesting actually. 
But yeah, as I say, that coriander spice kind of mixes a little bit with the bread and yeast base of this beer. So it's, it's a really interesting and unusual one, actually. So let's give it a taste and see how we get on. Quite sp the, the first impression I'm getting of this is there's a lot of that coriander spice in there. That's very prominent in this beer. It follows the aroma quite well, actually. There's just a little bit a very faint hint of caramel that you don't get in the aroma but that's coming out just a little bit in the front forward in the the malt side of the beer actually but yeah you've got that yeasty character and as i said to you the coriander spice is coming out a hell of a lot actually but in the end that's when you're starting to get the grassy hops coming out and again that coriander spice is in there it makes it almost just feel like a little bit like that aromatic -y spice that some different hops will give you but it's not that it has a different usually that just kind of goes around the edge of the tongue but the kind of coriander spice in this one is sitting in the middle of the tongue and uh, toward the back as well which is quite unusual to have that kind of spicy feel to it and have it all round the tongue rather than just on the edges with the, with the citric flavours it's, it's quite interesting but yeah you can definitely taste but this beer you can always describe a beer as taste as having grassy hops in the end but you can really taste the difference in the hoppy end of this beer with the lemongrass it's almost like it's just a little bit fresher if you like the lemongrass just feels that little bit kind of uh, fresher and almost like fresh cut grass and it is just a little bit sweeter as well actually it's almost you can actually it's almost as if it's had a little bit of lime added to it actually lemongrass with a bit of lime But yeah, at the end you're definitely getting the sort of nice fresh lemongrassy flavours. Maybe even <coughs> just a, a little bit of kind of regular sort of grass too just around the edges of the tongue. But like I say, the sort of yeasty spiciness to this one is unusual because it sort of spreads all around the tongue. It's almost like an aromatic spice that you get from some of these hops. But as I say, it spreads all the way down the tongue which is really, really interesting. And with this being designed as a Pilsner style beer as well, the lemongrass character is interesting because obviously with a German Pils or Helles beer you're used to the grassy character being a certain way and it's really unique in that sense. It's a very unusual kind of blend of flavours this one so if you do get one of these beers you know just take a little bit of time and actually just kind of get used to, get used to it because it's, it's a very, as I say, it's a very unusual blend and they feel quite unusual on the palate actually. But in the aftertaste, the, the sort of spice kind of disappears a little bit and I think you'll notice that when you taste this beer, the spice does kind of become a little less prominent as you go through the beer and it just kind of sits there a little bit on the top of the mouth and towards the back of the tongue actually and that caramel note I was noticing at the start is kind of completely gone as well actually. But overall in terms of the mouthfeel, it's, um, I would say it's light bodied actually, the carbonation is moderate, obviously it's a little bit more since it's a Pilsner beer than some of the IPAs and things like that, there's a little bit of dry character in the finish and that actually does help a little bit to let you feel this kind of different lemongrass character than the regular grassy character that you would associate with a kind of German Pils or something like that and it is a little bit, it is a kind of, it is a little bit dry I would say as well, it's just it's actually more, this, this lemongrass is actually a little bit more dry than the regular kind of grassy and aromatic hops that you get at the end. What I would say as well actually now that I think of it is that some of the organic beers that I tried in Germany, the mouthfeel of this one is a little bit chalky and that kind of accents the, the sort of the coriander spice in this one a little bit and um, it, it works really well with it actually, it reminds, as I say, it reminds me of these kind of, this unusual mouthfeel you get with the uh, with the German organic beer, so give those a try and then try this perhaps and see what you think, but I can see how it pairs, it would pair well with Thai food actually and oriental food 
So if you want a good beer to go with that, I'm not, I'm not sure how regular it is, but if you get the chance, pick up the Dim Sun. I think I preferred the Keen Keen, if I'm honest with you. I thought Keen Keen was a, a kind of nicer beer. The spice in this one is just a little bit unusual for me. But overall, it is quite an interesting beer, and it's got some really unusual flavours in it. So if you want something unique, um, I would say go for it. But overall... It's not the most flavourful beer that you'll get from McKellar, but it does actually, as I say, it does post a really pose a really interesting take on a Pilsner beer. Very unusual feel on the palate, as I've said a couple of times already. But anyway, um, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. As always, please let me know in the comments section below if you have uh, tried this yourself. Always interesting to hear other people's comments. And uh, as always, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. As I say, if you want a unique take on a Pilsner beer, this is the one for you. If you're doing your first, if you want to try your first McKellar beer, perhaps this isn't the best one to go for. Go for one of their stouts or for one of their paleos. But this is a very interesting one to try when you're a bit more accustomed to their beers. But thanks again. Like, subscribe, share all the usual YouTube stuff. I will catch you soon with another beer review and I do have many more McKellar beer reviews for you to come so subscribe if you're interested in McKellar beer. Cheers.